Jonathan Peck writes, which animation film director would you like to see to translate it into a live action film? My pick would be Pete Docter. Yeah, well, I mean, I got a we got a chance to already see Andy Stanton uh, do mm, one, and I right. and I liked what he ended up with with John Carter, just yeah. a brutally marketed film, yeah. horribly marketed movie. Uh, but I ended up really enjoying John Carter, so that that was good. Um, I mean, so I would have to then go back. I would love to see uh, uh, Lasseter. I would love to see Lasseter direct a live action mm. film. I'd be very, very curious to see what he did. We already got a chance to see um, uh, Bird. Uh, we already got to see Brad Bird do live, and it we had a great result. Mission Impossible Four, and then oh. yeah, right, mediocre uh, result with Tomorrowland. Tomorrowland. But we're really looking forward to seeing what he does next. But get just stay on Incredibles two, Brad. Um, so yeah, so I got to see Stanton. I'm left with Lasseter. What about you, Dave Filoni? Uh, oh, that would be interesting. Dave, yeah. I actually spoke to Dave Filoni, who's the he's the executive producer of Star Wars Rebels. Spoke to him at the premiere, and I talked oh, nice. to him for a little bit, and said, "I told him, I said, dude, I want to see you do an anthology movie." He's like, "Keep talking it up, man." He's yeah. like, "He's like, I want, I want to do it." He's like, "I'd love to do it. He'd love, he'd love to do one, and he'd love to do a live action too." He's, you watch what he's done with Rebels. You watch what he's done in general with the storytelling of Clone <clears throat> Wars, and I think that he would produce and direct an amazing. Star Wars anthology film, whether it be an Obi Wan movie or whatever it is, I think he's a guy I'd love to see do live action. I would love to see Filoni take over the Underworld series. That remember Lucas was developing, yeah. and wrote fifty-two yeah. scripts, oh, right. and then Kathleen Kennedy was like, was hey, look, the thirteen, scripts. thirteen. Oh yeah, yeah, the Underworld, no, the Underworld TV, scripts, right, yeah, right. like fifty-two right. full hour-long scripts. So they're like, no, we're looking through those right now. We're not, we're not saying that that's not happening. We're gonna adapt those. He would be great because he's so good at taking. Yeah, elongated uh, series yeah. and making that happen. Was he wearing the the cowboy hat? Yeah, he, yes. he, he, he did. Yeah. It was a, it was a thing. black one. It was a little different with the with the black suit. Nice. He, yeah, he went up a level. Yeah, if you want to play a game, yeah. who can <laughs> tell these two guys from behind? Robert Rodriguez and Dave Filoni. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. I can't. I can't yeah. tell. I think <laughs> I, you guys listed off all the ones that I could remember. It's like Lassiter on a Birds already doing. Something. All right, what's next? Alex McClinter writes, taking my girlfriend to see the movie tomorrow. However, she's never seen any of the Star Wars films. Oh, Will no. she still enjoy the movie? The bigger question is, <clears throat> why are you with her? I knew that was coming. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Like, are you in a part of the country where there's not, yeah. there's a disproportionate number of men to women? Right. Or... And there's still, no, the other question is, there's still hours left in the day. Why isn't she watching the other yeah, ones right now? Why are you not, like, what is wrong with you? Yeah. How, <laughs> how can you look her in the face and say, I care about you, yet you are not sitting her down to watch the original trilogy? You've got a lot of hours left today. Sit down, bring her on over, pick up, uh, pick up some popcorn. Look, you can watch, the, having seen the movie now, I can say, you can watch The Force Awakens having never seen anything else and just enjoy it as a standalone movie. You can. Well, you, well, okay, you I've saw seen it. all the Star you Wars have, movies. But, but, well, I did have. you remember, did you remember right. them? You the saw thing when you were younger, I right? Don't, I don't like pee, poop, throw up over Star Wars the way these guys do. I, I like Star Wars, but... This What's up with movie, that Phasma nail polish? Okay. <laughs> this movie, um, I think you will really enjoy regardless if you've seen any of the Star Wars. They definitely tip their hats to the hardcore, you know, devout fans to Star Wars. But um, I think you'll still really like it, even if you're not a hardcore fan. I think Hashtag if, pee, poop, throw up. Yeah, <laughs> I think if, you, if, if you're a... Uh, gal or guy has not seen Star Wars, you can always throw these lines because they won't know any of the lines of Star Wars. So the next time they say, I love you, you could say, I know. <laughs> you just come off as like the dashing scoundrel that you are. They won't get the reference. So, well, yeah. but definitely I think you, you know, if they see, if they've never seen any of the Star Wars movies and you take them to see The Force Awakens, and they will love it. I agree. Then you get a chance to say, hey, check out this other movie, amazing thing. It's called Star Wars A New Hope. It right. came out maybe before you were born. It was a blockbuster. Let's watch that together. I think that that's what's going to happen, yeah. though, because f let's say, so your girlfriend has never seen it before, and then you take her and she loves it. She's going to want to see the history. She's yeah. going to want to learn more about it. There's just There are a couple things that happen, though, in the movie that I think that you'll be there, there'll be more to it if you go back and watch the other ones too, you won't be lost. You certainly won't be lost, but you'll have more of an impact on you if you go and watch the other ones. And it'll be cooler if you just say, yeah, there's only four, five, and six. They never made one, two, and three. And she's yeah. like, I know, but there's these. Now nah, that doesn't count. Anti cheese. Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah, or watch the anti cheese ads. All right, let's take a couple more. Okay, Shaz Shahid writes, big fan of the show. Who is the most iconic character and why? Solo, Rambo, Terminator, Vader, Batman, Indiana Jones. Whoa, let me see that last thing. 
<sighs> list off that list again. Yeah. Read it out loud. Let me see where are they. That's a right big here. list. That's a it's it's a great list. Solo, Balboa, Rambo, Terminator, Vader, Batman, Indiana Jones. I think you got to take Vader out because of everything going on right now. No, nah, you can keep really? him in. Batman wins hands down. Mm. Takes all those punks out. Yeah, right. Batman for me. I see. To me, it's either Batman or Vader. Um, because I don't know if there's any corner of the globe you can go to and show a picture of Vader or a picture of Batman and have somebody not know who they are. I know, are. but I know who Batman is. He's Bruce Wayne, and I know who Darth Vader is. He's little baby Anakin. Yeah, Yippee! Uh, yeah. Ruins yeah. It. We're talking who about cares? Darth Vader, though. Yeah. We're talking about Vader. Iconic talking, characters. Yeah, I, it's tight. I know, but now it's I see tight. a li little baby Anakin now. You can't say if you, you don't hear, see if you, Anakin's but, got Annie. If you I don't say, see if, it. If no, I go, no. you know right away who the character is. All right. Yeah. Uh, I'm going Vader. Just, just, And I think that it's also because of everything happening right now yeah i know um but even him even you can still forgive all that nonsense that happened with him sure. hating sand and all that stuff it leads into an incredible character because going back into reading these books and the comics and everything when you see or even rebels when you go into siege of lothal and you see that character he's terrifying he is a character that you recognize from the breathing, from the mask, everything that was put together that could have been the silliest character in sure. the history of film when he walked yeah. out. I'm sure people on the set are like, what is that? And the right. way that he's down and you add James Earl Jones' voice to him, Batman's no joke and he's a badass for sure. But he's also, had, if you want to throw that at me, I can throw George Clooney at you. Boo, yeah. don't throw George Clooney at me. <laughs> all right, as I say it's a tie, Christian, it's close. You got to get all yeah, hardball with me. I, I, I got a Batman and Robin too. at me. What's going on? I thought we were friends. All right, last question of the day. Kimberly Grosser writes, what are the chances of a Flashpoint movie in the DCCU? It is difficult to say until we get until we see Batman v Superman because once we see Batman v Superman, then we're going to get a much better feel about where they're going with everything. Man of Steel was the first film of this new series of films, yes, but I think they're really going to set their direction and they're really going to set their tone with Batman v Superman. And once we see that, then we can say, well, do what do we think of the chances of them doing this storyline or that storyline or whatever. It's hard to say when we haven't seen Batman v Superman yet. What, what do you guys think? I'm going to defer to the expert here. Uh, yeah, it's really difficult. I mean, like, the jury's kind of out. I mean, Marvel did it the way where they built their universe and then had this big, uh, you know, group thing. Batman v Superman, we got Man of Steel, and now we have everybody else is in this big movie. It's really hard to catch the tone of the film, especially with the disparate trailers. Like, the first trailer, I was totally all in. Second trailer made me question a lot of stuff. So until I actually see the entire film as a whole, it's really hard to tell about all the rest of the films. Yeah, I gotta agree, and I gotta see what what it, how it's gonna play out because we, we could be completely wrong from the way totally. what we saw with the trailer too, and and I kind of hope that we are that we just assume certain things because we saw the way it was cut, but it's hard to judge the other films before we see this one. Right, and Flashpoint is definitely something that won't won't happen in the next like five right. ten years. That's something that you have to develop all the other cinematic characters in order for it to matter to have a Flashpoint. Otherwise, it's useless. Hey guys, if you like this clip, click here to watch the entire episode. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel because it'll help you stay up to date with all the stuff we've got going on here at Collider.